gut punch for one local business that was already scrambling to stay open. The restaurant going up in flames overnight, where the owner says they'll go from here. Pfizer says its promising vaccine may be even better than previously thought. How soon the company could get the go ahead from regulators. And the changes FDSU is making in response to a rise in local cases and how students are taking the news. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Great to have you with us this midday. I'm Jim Patton. An emotional morning for the owners of a beloved South Park Brew Pub this morning, just as they were scrambling to adapt to the new restrictions. A devastating blow as their business goes up in flames. ABC 10 News reporter Vanessa Paz has more on the investigation into the incident and how the owners handling it this morning. Right, if you grew up in San Diego like myself, you know that Hamilton's Tavern is a true gem in the middle of South Park. And this morning, people close to the restaurant are reeling after finding out that a fire damaged inside of the tavern and parts of its brewery next door. No worries. Emotions were raw Tuesday for Hamilton's Tavern owner Scott Blair and employees after learning part of the restaurant and sister brewery next door were severely damaged following a kitchen fire that erupted early Wednesday. We got a call about 620 this morning and I thought it was the alarm going off because the routine is get the dogs on their walk and then on Wednesdays and Thursdays Sully and I brew uh, beer. So I just thought that was it. So the first thing is I hope everybody's OK. About half a dozen fire crews and police were on scene when he arrived. Thankfully, no one inside at the time, but nearby residents had to evacuate because of the smoke. But you're just like, I hope everybody's OK because we have a neighborhood. People live in that, that building. As if things couldn't get any worse amid the pandemic, Blair found out right away that wasn't the case. I just feel like you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, are you serious? Like, really? Hamilton's shut down its doors since July and operated out of their sister brewery next door because it was larger, then moved fully outside this past weekend amid the purple tier. The pandemic has just been a nightmare for our business, and it's been it's been hard to survive as it is. And, you know, uh, we we pivoted and started doing the all fresca dining. And Blair says their kitchen, which was their lifeline to stay open, now completely destroyed. Unsure where they go from here, but one thing they do know. It's going to take a little bit more than this to, before we, we hang it up. We'll, we'll fight. We'll fight. That's what we do. Hamilton's has received a wave of support since the news broke this morning. And owner Scott Blair says he feels humbled and will continue to fight for the community. Reporting in North Park, Vanessa Paz, ABC 10 News. This morning, Pfizer upping the ante. The company says not only is it seeking FDA approval in a matter of days, but now saying its vaccine is up to 95% effective against the coronavirus. That is an improvement from last week when it pegged the vaccine's effectiveness at about 90%. Also, Pfizer says its vaccine poses no serious safety concerns. An independent group has been keeping an eye on results and side effects. Meantime, Massachusetts-based biotech Moderna says the vaccine it's been developing is more than 94% effective against COVID. Meanwhile, the FDA has approved emergency use for the first at-home rapid coronavirus test. This is the Lucera COVID-19 all-in-one test kit. It allows users to swab the inside of their nose and then place it in a vial of a lab solution. It's then plugged into a portable device that reads those results in 30 minutes. The FDA has approved other at-home tests, but those needed to be shipped to a lab for results. For now, this kit will require a prescription from a doctor. San Diego County sending several more cease and desist orders out in the last 24 hours as local officials continue a push to increase enforcement. Since May, the county has sent cease and desist orders to 55 local businesses. This week alone accounts for 33 of those. That coming after we reverted to the purple tier and saw a spike in cases. The cease and desist orders essentially put businesses on notice that they must make changes or else face possible closure. Since May, six local businesses have been ordered to close, although that hasn't happened in over a month. And here's a quick look at the latest case numbers. The county reporting 718 new cases yesterday, trending downward from the previous two days, but still relatively high. About a month ago, the daily case total was floating between 230 and 430. Well, San Diego State shifting gears, hoping to go full time online learning by next week. But now students are also faced with having to decide 
where they're going to complete the rest of the school year. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell spoke to one about these changes and how they're affecting it. San Diego State University wants all of their classes to be held virtually by November 25th. Though they haven't seen an increase in COVID-19 cases on campus, they are concerned about the surge of cases in the county and in the state. This is how empty and quiet the campus of SDSU looks like after the university announced plans to go back to online learning, shutting down majority of their in-person classes. Student T.U. says this now puts him in a bind as he needs lab experience. My research depends on real in-person research. I need to operate the machine, which is on campus. I also need like object, which is real man or person. SDSU is halting in-person research for freshmen, sophomores and volunteers. But those who have timely graduation requirements may continue with in-person work on approved critical research projects. I may switch to like a comprehensive class, which means I just take lecture. I don't take any research, which is affecting my graduation because I'm a graduate student. I need some research background, and if I don't have any research background, it's hard for me, for me to find a job or got my PhD like an offer. SDSU is also asking students that will be returning to campus after Thanksgiving break to get a COVID-19 test weekly. That's different from the previous requirement of every two weeks. Reporting from home, Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. We have learned that a 24-year-old woman was behind the wheel of a car that hit and killed a construction worker overnight in Spring Valley. Happened around midnight along the 94. One eastbound lane was closed for construction, but at one point the driver crossed into that lane, striking one of the workers. The 41-year-old man has not been identified. He died at the scene. Cause of that crash is under investigation, but police do not believe that drugs or alcohol played a part. And while officers investigated that scene, traffic backed up, leading to a second accident involving three cars. Police say a Camry hit the back of a minivan with several people inside, which was slammed forward into the back of a white cargo van. At least four people were hurt and several were taken to the hospital. And now to the latest on the presidential election results. Georgia nearly finished with its recount done by hand, and officials say they don't expect the results to change. ABC's Alex Brechet has more. With a hand count audit deadline looming, Georgia on the minds of many. All 159 counties are on track to finish by midnight tonight. While uncounted votes have been found in three counties, election officials say they have not seen any evidence suggesting widespread fraud and they're defending Georgia's election integrity. Right now, President-elect Biden still leads by roughly 12,000 votes in Georgia after the uncounted ballots netted President Trump more than 1,000 votes. Georgia's Republican Secretary of State, Brad Raffensperger, doesn't expect the overall result to change, but says that hasn't stopped Trump supporters from attacking him, including both of the state's GOP senators. Well, it's surprising it's some of the vitriol and outright lies, and then, you know, some of the threats that you get. Uh, I would have thought Republicans were better than that. Raffensperger says he even got a call from Trump ally South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, whom he accuses of trying to pressure him to invalidate legally cast votes. Graham denies the accusation, saying he didn't do anything inappropriate, telling CNN. I want to make sure that we're taking the precautions necessary to validate signatures like we do if you show up on election. Graham claimed he made similar calls to secretaries of state in Arizona and Nevada, both publicly stating Graham never called them. This is false, tweeted Secretary Katie Hobbs of Arizona. Graham later clarifying he hadn't spoken with anyone in Nevada and had a conversation with the governor of Arizona about the election, not the secretary of state. Graham also asked by NBC. Why is a senator from South Carolina calling the secretary of state in Georgia anyway? Uh, because uh, the future of the country hangs in the balance. At the end of the day, when this recount is done, do you expect the results to change significantly? No. You expect Joe Biden to be the winner. Fair and square. Fair and square. Raffensperger must certify that election by Friday at 5 p.m. Alex Pache, ABC News, Washington. After being grounded for nearly two years, Federal Aviation Administration finally giving Boeing the green light. The FAA granting the company approval to once again carry passengers on its Boeing 737 MAX jet. The plane was grounded 20 months ago after two crashes that killed hundreds of people. Problems stemming from a software glitch that caused the plane to act erratically. 
Boeing says it spent $600 million since then upgrading the software and training pilots.